Hello and welcome to another AIC video. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video where I showcased the internals of four separate X200 series ThinkPads. And now what I'm going to be doing is going through each one and kind of giving each their own individual showcase, going over some of the features, things I like about it, and what you can expect out of one. And first up is this really nice condition X220. I've only had this for a couple of weeks. I've had several in the past. I really enjoyed them. Unfortunately, I got, made the decision to get rid of them and kind of regretted that. So now I have this one as part of my hopefully forever collection. Uh, it's in really nice shape uh, with very little signs of wear on it. Um, it's not perfect though. We'll discuss that here in a little bit, but um, it's a nice example of this particular laptop. And one of the biggest differences between this laptop and the next ones that you'll see as I go through them is the keyboard. So this has Lenovo's older style seven row keyboard, and it is probably one of the most defining features of a ThinkPad laptop, especially an older one like this. It is by far one of the best keyboards on a laptop I've ever typed on, period. Not the best keyboard I've ever typed on, you know, a mechanical keyboard that is standalone, get a more customized feel for what you're looking for. But as far as what is built into a laptop, I, I can't think of a better keyboard on a system than this seven row that Lenovo offered for so many years. Uh, the force required to push the button, the full size keys, the fact that there's so many more keys than on other keyboards. Um, it's just, it's a pleasure to type on and it definitely is a defining feature of what a ThinkPad should be is just a pleasant machine to use. Uh, it's probably the most important thing when somebody's working is that you type. You type emails or reports and you do coding and all this other stuff. It's the main part of the laptop you interact with. Another defining feature of this laptop is the ports. Like most ThinkPads, especially more classic ones, it has a plethora of ports on here. We have three USB, we have two video out, we have an expansion card, the uh, express card slot on here. Uh, we have an SD card reader. Um, we have network on here. Uh, just a ton of ports. And in my previous video, you can see that there's some expansion ports on the inside. Uh, there's one for a, a, a WAN card. You can upgrade the storage, uh, the memory. So lots of options on here for upgrading this system. Now I mentioned that express card slot, that's something that probably a lot of people are not that familiar with, but it's something that I've worked with a ton in the past. So this is a PCMCIA card, so it's a little bit older style, but very similar in the way it looks. Um, the express cards were a little bit narrower or they had a little bit of a notch in there to plug into the system. Uh, functioned the same way and it gave it additional ports. So this is a WAN card that utilized PCMCIA. Um, you can get hard drives, you can get additional USB ports, you can do all sorts of upgrades to your system via this. Um, and this Express card, because it goes into the PCI Express lanes, uh, is currently being used for uh, external or eGPUs. So that is a really nice feature to have. Now, as I mentioned, this laptop is upgradable. It has two RAM slots on there, so I have two DIMMs of 8 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. It is not DDR3L, it is just DDR3, so you don't want to get the right, wrong kind of RAM. I have seen where people have a 16 gig DIMM, so you can have 32 gigs, but those are very expensive and very rare. Eight's the fairly typical uh, maximum DIMM that you see, and this kit does support again too. All right, and one of my favorite features on this laptop is the keyboard light. Now, this does not have a backlit keyboard, what it has is a keyboard light. If I hit function and the home key up here, you'll see it turns on a little light up here that lights up the keyboard, just a little bit of the space around the laptop. I've always found that to be a fairly useful feature. I like backlit keyboards just fine, but actually having a light, if you ever have to read something, um, I found that to be very useful on this system. All right, and this is kind of where things start to go for the worst for the X220. As far as what this laptop is. It is now over a decade old and it is starting to show some of that age. First and foremost, those three USB ports, they're all type A's and they're all USB 2. They're not 3.0, they're not 3.1, they are USB 2.0. They are slow <laughs> compared to today's uh, standards. And you notice it, if you ever have to transfer a file on or off of it, 
um, it, it, it's pretty darn slow. The video port, the video outs, you have a VGA and a full size uh, display port. Um, now the display port does carry audio um, and you can convert it to HDMI, but it would be nice if that was an HDMI port. It's just a much more common port when you're plugging into projectors and things like that. VGA has really started to go out of favor. Um, a couple years ago, I definitely would have said VGA was really good to have. A lot of companies were still using it for things like projectors and stuff. But um, the last couple of years, a lot of companies, at least where I've been working, they've done a ton of upgrades, especially with all the you know, people working from home and things like that. And I'm not going to say for what reason. Um, it They've done upgrades to improve the systems to support that. And that means newer hardware and newer standards. Uh, also, the wireless in here, it is just... Um, wireless n and so it's only 2.4 gigahertz um and so you don't have some of that more advanced same with bluetooth it's an old version of bluetooth a little bit slower and so connects to devices consumes a little bit more battery things like that so definitely showing some age there as far as um, the way it connects with the rest of the world another thing about this laptop is it is a chunky boy it is heavy it is 65 percent heavier than my x280 and it is 75 percent thicker so nearly double the thickness of my daily use laptop it is not light it is fairly compact still but when you go to put this in a bag you feel it it is not you're not going to hide it away in anything now at the time that this was released it was very small very compact but time marches on and newer technologies definitely have shrunk things down quite a bit Next on our list is the screen. This has a 1366 by 768 TN panel. It is just okay. It's not great. It's not terrible. It's not the worst TN. I've definitely had worse screens on even new laptops, you know, those super budget systems. This isn't such a budget system. And that TN panel is just not very good. There is an IPS display out there floating around. Um, I've never seen one in person, so I don't know how good it is. None of the ones that I've touched have had that display, so uh, I know it exists. I know you can upgrade this display to it, but they're fairly expensive and not super common, and they do require quite a bit of work to swap out that panel. So me personally, I'm just going to live with the TN panel. Um, it's fine. It's not great, but it's fine. It works. Now, another area where it falls a little bit flat compared to newer systems is the touchpad. So this is fairly small. You can see on here. Because of the seven row keyboard, it really reduces the overall height that the touchpad can be. And then it's also narrower as well. And it is very noticeable. I overrun the touchpad quite a bit being used to larger ones. Even on budget systems, they'll have a much bigger touchpad. The other thing is it doesn't have all the same multi-touch gestures that some of the newer ones have. You can scroll with two fingers, but you can't right click with two fingers. You can't do the back or forward and things that you can do on newer touchpads. So that's something that I've run into quite a bit because I'm so used to using different gestures on my other systems that I that I fail fall flat on this touchpad. And I end up going to a mouse or just using the track point more often than not on this system, just because the touchpad I just, I use the wrong gestures or it doesn't support the gestures I go to use, and it is annoying. One of the biggest areas of weakness for this system is the graphics. So this does just have onboard graphics, Intel HD 3000 officially supports just uh, DirectX 10.1. Um, I've read somewhere that it does support some DirectX 11 features, but every uh, performance test I ran on this laptop once it got to that Direct DirectX 11 feature set, it would just crash the test, couldn't run it. So this laptop was never meant to be a gaming laptop, especially with those integrated graphics, the older integrated graphics. It just isn't all that great, even when it was new. Um, and it's definitely showing its age now for sure. Now, if you're wanting to play older games, stuff from like the 90s, early 2000s, it will run it just fine. Uh, but do not expect it to play anything modern. Fortnite's out. Um, even Minecraft, it will struggle with just because there's so much um, going on that it just really is not meant for that. So I would not buy this laptop if your goal is to be playing games on it. It just isn't up to the speed of it. Another area where it's lacking is the sound quality. This laptop, again, it's a business laptop. They didn't expect you to be playing music, watching videos, things like that. 
you're meant to be doing work on it. So the sound quality was definitely not something that they were looking to have be very stellar on this system, which is unfortunate. The speakers on it are pretty terrible. Uh, really what it sounds like, it sounds like you're listening to somebody talk to you through a tube from half a block away. It's very narrow sound and it sounds very far away from you, even though you're just a few inches away from the laptop. They're buried deep in it, underneath it, not facing anywhere near you. So you're gonna struggle to hear uh, those speakers. The last thing on here that I wanna talk about as far as some of the negatives is the battery life. Even with a larger battery, battery life on this laptop is not very good. Now my battery is toast. I need a new one. That's gonna be one of the next things I do to this is replace the battery. It only lasts for about five, 10 minutes. Unfortunately, that's not long enough for anything I want to do with it. So it'll, it will be getting a new battery. But even with a new battery, you're looking at between two and a half to four ish hours, depending on what you're doing. That's not great. Um, you know, that's with the standard battery, not with the nine cell extended battery. Uh, it, it could do better. It definitely could do better, but it definitely is not its strong point. Newer CPUs, newer generations of hardware have definitely improved battery life. So the real question comes down to why. Why would somebody in 2022 buy this laptop? Well, there's a lot of things that are going for it. First and foremost, it is absolutely not obsolete. If you're doing basic computing on it, if you're watching YouTube, going on Facebook, going on Reddit, um, anything like that, it runs fine. It, it runs great. I have no hiccups, no stutters, no qualms about it being able to run any typical use case on this system. You're gonna to wanna to wear headphones if you're doing anything with music or a YouTube or anything, but as far as being able to run it, it is just fine. If you're doing any kind of typing, any word processing of any kind, anything on Excel, uh, because you can upgrade the RAM to 16 gigs, that's a ton of RAM in this laptop, and it gives you a ton of capacity for running big Excel spreadsheets, um, big Word docs, you know, anything like that, um, PowerPoint presentations, it gives you a ton of resources to be able to do those things. The CPU is plenty powerful enough to do, to do those things. And then you come down to, as I've already mentioned, that excellent keyboard. You're gonna be spending any time typing on this. This is the computer to have. It is a joy to type on. It's, you know, after hours of working on the script for this, not that I use it much, um, you're not going to have fatigued fingers. You're not going to have sore hands. In fact, being that this is a little bit thicker than some of the other laptops, it actually gives you a better wrist support when you're typing even too. So I highly recommend for anybody who wants to be doing a lot of typing, definitely consider one of these older ThinkPads because man alive, are they a pleasure to type on. And I just can't say enough good things about it. And I probably sound like I'm repeating myself because I am excellent keyboard. The next big thing that somebody would want to buy this for is customization, modding, um, going outside the box. The aftermarket support for these is huge. The community support for these is huge. If you want to run Linux, if you want to run it as a hypervisor like ESXi, if you want to go in and start flashing the BIOS, um, doing upgrades, things like that, there is just a huge, huge uh, community base for these. And there's all sorts of write-ups and docs. And so I definitely think it's, you know, for somebody who wants to go in and kind of customize and do some of their own work on something, this is a great laptop for that. You're going to be very happy with your end results because there's so much you can do, so much documentation out there. Uh, a few hours of research will get you some really cool things. Like I mentioned before, the eGPU support um, to flash so you can support different uh, wireless cards. Um, yeah, I've just seen some people doing some pretty crazy things with these. Um, there's huge support for um, third-party operating systems other than Windows. Like I said, I've seen these run ESXi and all sorts of different kind of Linux, things like that uh, on these systems. So it's a great machine if you're wanting to do that customization, really kind of go out of the box in your use case. And the last reason why somebody would really want this is the nostalgia. If you've been working in IT industry for any, any length of time, you work in business for any length of time, you probably had something like this laptop or... Um, a little bit, it's bigger brother, the T420 uh, or the W520, something like that. You, you probably have had a very similar laptop and you can buy this laptop. It won't take up a ton of room on your shelf. You can enjoy that nostalgia part of it and then put it back on the shelf and it not take up a ton of space. Um, 
The last thing really about this laptop that I want to discuss is its price. So a few years ago, you were able to pick these up for about 75 bucks for a good one. Uh, that's not the case anymore. You can still some, find them for 75 bucks, but they're going to be scratched. They're going to be cracked. There's going to be issues with them. Uh, keyboards are going to be maybe missing keycaps, things like that. For a decent one in decent condition, you're looking at about 150 to $200. So that really is pushing it into that price point of a brand new budget system in which depending on your use case this may be better that may be better but um these have started to go up in price so if you're looking to buy one of these i would definitely consider doing that sooner rather than later uh, because i feel again this is just me and my feelings um i'm not trying to speculate but i feel like these are going to go up in price uh, there's not many left on the market. They're definitely showing their age. And so people are going to start getting rid of them. Uh, they break, you know, get dropped, whatever. And so if you want a good one at a fairly reasonable price, I think now is the time to start looking. So anyways, that is a look at my X220. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, leave that down in the comment section down below. I will be doing a performance and gaming test on this laptop after I go through all of them. There'll be a little bit of comparison between them. Uh, if you're looking for that, definitely keep an eye out. Subscribe to the channel. I have some support links in the description down below. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day.